back with another video, CSG. You know what I'm saying? The reason I be starting it out with the little thing, I just be trying to make sure it be recording. Because sometimes I be recording the video and it be like, or I, I don't be recording the video and I be just talking and stuff. So I be trying to start it off right here. But check me out, man. We back again. A little consistency for y'all. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I hope y'all having a good day today. And, you know, I'm off my rum. You know what I'm saying? Plantation rum, if you are wondering. And if you are 21, you can go pick that up at your nearest total wine. But I am over here just chilling, just relaxing, and going to react to another Prem Hood Cinema. This is Minister Society. This is two reactions today. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Y'all let me know how y'all day going. My day going pretty good. You feel me? I'm just chilling. I'm just, you know, relaxing right now. I'm going to do my thing. And, um, yeah, let's go see what they talking about, Minister Society. You doing good? You good? You all right? Take a sit with me if you're 21. Hitting. Y'all have any other reactions y'all want me to do? Be sure to leave it down below, man. I respond to pretty much everybody. Sometimes people be putting negative comments and stuff. I just be like, bruh. I'm reacting to a video that everybody loves. You feel me? That's all I'm doing. You know what I mean? Like, why are you coming at me? For doing that. Like, you could start your own channel and, like, do the same thing, bro. Like, why you, why you coming at me with all that animosity and all that venom? I love my 203 subscribers. You feel me? I'll show love. I try to be consistent. I might take a break every now and then because I'm, I'm in school right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, give me a break. You feel me? But, like, I love y'all. If y'all comment, I'm going to react to y'all comments i'm gonna text y'all back you feel me i try to you know get a little engagement with y'all because i love y'all i love my supporters so we are finna keep this thing going we're gonna keep running it up and it is what it is i hope y'all good with my reactions i hope y'all love what y'all seeing the content that i'm providing and i hope y'all stay with me you know what i'm saying like keep rocking with your boy let's get it It starts off with these two savage ass teenagers walking into the corner store. I'm sorry, y'all. That's not me. This video was uploaded with 360p. It looked blurry. I'm sorry. That ain't me. I can't do nothing about it. I tried. Their name's Kane and O Dog. They from the hood. They lives crazy and sad. They in the store kind of wild in a little bit. Being too loud, opening shit before they buy it. Real savage shit. Like boom gang level shit almost. It's ridiculous. Hey man, I'ma pay you. The store owner's hanging out, being Chinese. The lady keeps fucking with these niggas, following them around and shit. Bitch, stop following me around this motherfucker. <laughs> You're getting on my nerve. Hurry up and buy. So they pay for the beer and shit, these teenagers. The guy didn't ID them at all, so, you know, that's illegal. Right when they about to leave, the Chinese nigga says some slick shit under his breath. I can't stand y'all. I feel sorry for your mother. You think I'm a bitch? What you say about my mama? You feel sorry for who? <laughs> oh, dog, she's the guy. To be honest with you, I ain't trying to blame the Asian man, but like, come on, bro. They ain't have bulletproof, like, because every time I go to, like, the corner store or whatever, they be behind, like, a glass. I guess back then, they ain't had no, like, protection for them. But that's crazy, bro. You can't, you can't conduct business in the hood like that and be racial profiling like that. To be honest, they, they, they provoked that situation, man. I ain't saying the retaliation was warranted. I don't think he should have got killed, him and his old lady. But at the same time, he should have got his ass beat. He should have got his ass beat. 
Because, like, come on, bro. Like, you can't be sitting there, like, you wide open, all the liquor behind you and everything. You a corner store in the hood. I'm sorry for your mama. Like, come on, bro. Like, they already showing that they don't like you. Then you're going to say something crazy like that. You in the hood, bro. Like, don't don't you under... You done worked at that store for how many years now? How you going to just try two, two young ass? I don't know. I ain't feel sorry for him when I watched it. That's all I'm saying. Should have been behind bulletproof glass, my guy. Guy, he gets the surveillance tape, then shoots the lady too. Bitch, I told you, stupid ass. Shut the fuck up. Damn. Nigga, hurry up. I'm not gonna lie, this opening scene is intense as fuck. Really though, that's just good filmmaking. I can't, it's no jokes. Goddamn rated killer. You won't be needing this now. Where all the money at, man? Fuck that. Fuck that. Go. Went to the store just to get a beer, came out and accessed the murder and armed robbery. It then flashes back to the 70s. This nigga Bruh Man is here and also the little nigga from Soul Food. I call him Soul Cool Fit. What's up, he plays Kane when he was little. His mom is on drugs and his dad is Samuel L. Jackson. So he's all fucked up, yeah. Hey, what you doing? Now, go and get him, nigga. To be honest, oh, shout out to Bruh Man. To be honest, damn, Bruh Man was always big. He was always like a cock diesel, like, like Tiny. Hey, rest in peace, Tiny Lister. They was always some big ass dudes, even from back in the day. But, um, how, all right, so this is the problem I'll be having, right? I guess because he had his grandparents, but still, like, and Boys in the Hood, when you think about Trey, when Trey was young, he was getting in fights, he was hanging with hood niggas. He grew up around hood niggas. How come he was so soft? How come he was so like, he wasn't about that action at all? But you grew up like that, around action, around people getting stomped out, around people getting shot. I would feel like you would kind of have that little hood essence in you. But it's like Kane, it's like, bro, your daddy shot somebody in front of you. Your mama was on crack. Growing up like that, I would think like he had, he would have had more like, I mean, I guess he did stump out Buddy in the end, but like for the most part, and I guess he did rob a car. Uh, I guess he did have some street, he had more street element in him than um, Trey from Boys in the Hood. I could say that at least. But it's like, bro, uh, old dog, you going in there with a hothead, bro, to go buy 40s at night, and you not even old enough to drink. Him catching the body is not really going to be that surprising for you to drop your beer and all that extra shit that he was doing. That's kind of like a nigga who ain't never been used to that type of shit. He'll be reacting like how Kane did. In my estimation, like, Kane would have probably tried to take some chips or, like, go in the back and try to, like, take the tape. They should have had him more like, damn, boy, I ain't even going there for that, man, da 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 And then he ran in there, took the tape and shit just to make sure, try to destroy the tape try to do stuff because you've been around that your whole life so you kind of know how to move and how to function in those situations or like when old dog was tripping and was like what you said about my mama you should at least been like yo old dog like chill man he's sitting there drinking go 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 yeah man what you doing bro you know the dude that you hang with is a is a wild card he could do anything at any any given moment and he came in there with a piece you already know that he walk around with the strap on him so, like, that don't even make sense. <laughs> Good drink. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> hey, what you doing out there, room? Pernell looked out for me when things got rough. He taught me Pernel. things. Kane's dad is having a poker game in the basement. It's fun. They laughing, doing heroin. Look at man. Now that you've been out the joint about two weeks, don't you think it's about time you gave me my money? I told you I ain't had your money yet, man. Fuck you, Dad. Better suck my dick. That's crazy, bro. How you say SMD to a dude that got a gun in your face, bro? You got to be real bold to just a nigga got a gun in your face and you just like, man, SMD, bro. It is what it is. We finna play this next hand. Like, you got to be real bold to do something like that. He wildin', bro. He wildin' for that one. That's they crazy. flash forward and came about to graduate from high school. Everybody excited for him. 
He don't give a shit though. He just wanna sell drugs and hang out all day and shit. He hasn't really thought of any future type of shit. He don't really got no goals or interests. He upset that his face all pixely and low resolution. This a bootleg movie, y'all. I admit it, I did, did it. I admit I love Steve Harvey. For all the bullshit they try to teach you in high school, I graduated with about what the fuck is that? Both the Kane's parents died living reckless and shit. Now he lives with his super wholesome, generic black grandparents. Thomas! When you get that diploma, I'll be the proudest grandfather in all Ooh. of L.A. I can't believe he was a Jada Pinkett in the movie. She's stuff. Purnell's girlfriend or baby mother or something. Purnell was in prison for life, goddamn. He played by OG Bobby Johnson. This nigga loved jail. This nigga's born in jail. Pernell had hooked up a house and a little money for him, but I still went by to check on him. It's graduation night. Kane's cousin Harold is here visiting, and they go out and party. Niggas at the party keep coming up to Kane. Like, his cousin Harold is kind of like how I would think that Kane should have been. Kane should have been, like, used to the hood stuff. Like, you see people fighting, like, damn, boy, get that boy. Do this and that. But it's like they kind of made Kane kind of, like, weak a little bit. Just a little bit. Like, he still had a little streak, but he was, like, just... A, it like, it like it was all foreign to him a little bit. I don't know. It was weird. Kane saying the old dog showed them the robbery tape. I got the tape. I got the motherfucking tape. I told you. Nigga, I know you ain't dumb enough to be showing niggas the robbery tape, man. What's up with that? Man, cool out, nigga. We just having fun with the motherfucking tape. Man, hey, nobody else going to see the tape. This shit is funny, though. Know? <laughs> Damn, nigga. Oh, okay, let's get this out the way. Nigga, the tape is not funny. Nigga, it's 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 not funny. Nigga, Bro, I just realized he um he's Ryder from GTA, bro. MC8. Hey man, he should have had his own movie. Him and Young Melee, man. They should have did like a movie back in the day, man. CJ and, and Ryder, bro. I think that movie would have been tough. What y'all think, man? They should have made Tupac O Dog or something. Or Kane. That would have been hard, bro. They would have had Tupac as, as uh, Kane, and then they would have had MC8. And they would have had O Dog. I don't know. It would have been tough. Who got some snaps on the. My niggas hurt, broke, and I'm slanging all that shit in the hood, and y'all ain't got no motherfucking money. We'll get you back. All that motherfucking money. Nah, this nigga O Dog should definitely have some money. Didn't he just commit a whole fucking robbed. robbery homicide? That motherfucking money. Get your ass up out the car, nigga. Get the fuck out. Break yourself, nigga. Nigga, don't make me rush you. Get your ass up out the car. Shoot that nigga, do you? Nigga, fuck you. Oh my god. Kane and his cousin end up getting carjacked and shit. The cousin dies and Kane gets shot too. It's pretty fucked up. Kane heals up from the gunshot wound. He only got shot in the shoulder, so I don't know what this whole shit was. Niggas gagging and shit. They had to carry this nigga. I mean, that's not fair of me to say. I'm sure it hurt. The Lord didn't put you here to be shooting and killing each other. It's right there in the Bible. Exodus 20:13. Do you care whether you live or die? I don't know. I don't know. Message. Word got back about them little marks who jacked you and Harold. Down with a 187. Let's do this. They find the dudes who shot his cousin. They had one of those weird ass West Coast food stands where it's out in the middle of nowhere and shit. Fucking is all small and shit. Tables out front. That shit weird to me. Take your big earring ass and go get us something to eat, all right? Also, MC8 is in the movie. He their homeboy. He's a rapper or something in real life. He voiced Ryder from San Andreas, and he was on that one Kendrick song, I think. I don't really know shit about him, but he an all-star. Is you ready to do this shit or what, motherfucker? Okay. Yeah, yeah, nigga, break them I thought killing those fools would make me feel good. But it really didn't make me feel anything. Ah, man, I got two dollars. I ain't got no motherfucking money, nigga. Man, I know I'm a little short, but, uh... You know, you motherfucking... Leave me alone. Man, come on, man. Give me my money back. Kane is hanging out with Jada Pinkett and her son and her fucking giant ass eyebrows. Oh, my God. What the fuck is that? She lectures Kane about being a savage and keeping his... What was Jada Pinkett's job? 
How was she able to have this house and everything like that? Baby daddy in jail, in prison for life. What was she doing? Like, she ain't had no problem raising her kid at all in this in this movie. I know, like, Kane will come every now and then and drop money off, but she was acting like she didn't need the money. Well, she, she kind of acted like she didn't need it. I don't know what the hell she did, bro. She had a big-ass house to be up in, living in L.A. and shit by herself like that. That was kind of weird. Savagery away from her son? She don't like savage shit, apparently. I mean, obviously she does like it to an extent, right? She hangs out with this nigga all the time. Her last dude was a savage, too. A savage. So I kind of don't want to hear that shit, bitch. Stop judging people. Let me see that. And pull the trigger. Bro, didn't they just beat this junkie nigga ass? Why the Why fuck is he anyway? still hanging out with them? Yeah. Surely there's other drug dealers around this motherfucker. Yo, nigga, what up? Uh, nothing. Why you come to this motherfucker so early all the time, man? You said one o'clock? I don't give a fuck what I said, nigga. See what you got. Clifton Powell in the movie, he plays a nigga named Chauncey. Chauncey. This overly nerdy white dude comes and asks Chauncey to steal a car for him. He's doing some insurance fraud shit, I think. I don't know. I don't be listening sometimes. Be here tomorrow night about uh, 10 30. Are you sure you mean tomorrow night? What, you scared to come through this neighborhood at night, motherfucker? Huh? Don't bring your narrow ass up in here. Back at the Westwood. How did, they go to how did that even happen? Like, how was he like in touch with some random ass white dude that just comes over and just he steals cars from him? Like that just that's a thing? That's just like oh yeah, boy, I steal cars. Like, how do you even get your name out enough to just have random ass white people show up in the hood and just be like, oh yeah, man, I need you to get this for me and then we gonna... Why? Why would they even do that? Why would, why would they come to the hood and do that? Why would they come to Crenshaw? Huh? What? Steal the car. And he ain't even the one stealing it. He letting other people steal the car. They kinda hot as shit going in. Making hella noise and shit. These niggas kinda bad at crime, bro. The motherfucking crib getting blunted and shit. They horrible at crime. Are you watching out? Nigga, hurry the fuck up! Damn! What is going on? Shit, let's get the fuck up out of here! Kane goes to jail, but only for a little bit. He got charged with attempted joyriding, so that's nothing really. They let this nigga O Dog off with a warning because he's still a minor. This nigga definitely need to be off the streets though. Oh my god. Please, son. You got some money or not? Oh man, come on, man. Cook me up this time. Bro. Nigga, you crazy. I got these burgers, man. They some double cheese burgers. Bro. Nigga, I just ate. <laughs> I said I suck your dick. Come on, man. <laughs> Damn. You know, that's pretty fucked up, but I'm sure this base head nigga still gonna hang around no matter what. Also, this nigga overacting like shit, right? Like, we get it, bro. You're a base head. They some double cheese burgers. Bro. Nigga, the cops match my prints to the one from that bottle I dropped in a liquor store. Now listen to me, little bitch. I'm gonna ask you some real simple questions. How you got money to get double cheeseburgers, bro? Exactly. You know, fucked up. Yeah. The cops let him go because they didn't have any real evidence. I mean, that tape is fucking everywhere, though, so it's only a matter of time. Spoilers. I'm sorry. Kane's hanging out with the homies. He got a hooping homie. He good at hooping. And he also got this woke, overly Muslim homie. He good at Muslim. Because I was talking to my brothers here about drugs and the community. They planning on getting out of the hood and moving to Kansas, and they asked Kane if he wants to go to. You going to Kansas with this fool? Yeah, Kane, you should come too, man. I mean, you're not doing nothing out here but getting yourself in a lot of trouble. Kane buys a new car from this shady ass chop shop type of deal. I don't know. It's a nice car, though. I had the dope ride. I needed some rims bad. He got his car and now he wants some nice rims for him. He decided to work real hard and save up to buy <laughs> yeah, some. Yeah, right. I'm joking. He's still. Why he ain't just uh, sell drugs and just buy the rims? Why he had to rob somebody just to get the rims, bro? I mean, I guess that's that's them trying to show how hood he is or how ruthless he is. But it's just. You got money. You have money. Like, 
at the chop shop, you could have just put rims on it. I don't get. But it, it did create a funny scene though when he had the man order. He had the man order some food for him when he could have just went. Oh damn, the crackhead just got shot though. Could have just got the cheeseburgers from the crackhead. What's up with them with cheeseburgers? They ain't eat nothing. The whole all they did was drink beer. The crackhead had double cheeseburgers. Then he had the dude order him a burger and some fries and a shake. It's like, bro. Oh, they did have barbecue. It's like all niggas eat, bro. It's burgers and and barbecue. Like, come on, bro. They ain't had no no chicken, bro. They ain't go to Roscoe's. You feel me? I guess I gotta do work so I ain't fit. I want your motherfucking Dayton's and your motherfucking stereo, and I take a double burger with cheese. What? Let me have a double burger. What the fuck I said with cheese, nigga? Bro, you can't trust niggas anywhere in the world. I always thought if a nigga had a nice car, he would be less inclined to pull some bullshit. You know, like nah. I figured motherfuckers <laughs> with something to lose were kind of safe to be around. I guess it's not always true. Well, you got a page or two. You're baller, huh? You're baller? We supposed to be brothers. Nothing. This nigga Kane pulls up on some girl at the park. He gets her number and shit. Smooth as shit, I might add. <laughs> One of my natural reflex. Oh, so what you like being in my way? I'm Eileen. Eileen? Mm -hmm. I mean, he was a little aggressive boxing or in like that. You shouldn't do that to women no more. They don't like that. Women, 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 women. Kane, what's up, nigga? I mean, that's bitch alone. The Muslim Yo's dad comes over, and Kane and everybody like him a lot. He's played by George Foreman. He a good boxer. He make grills. He, make grills. he a all star. Oh wait. Yeah, we talking about this Kansas trip. So what are you gonna do, KD? Being a black man KD. in America isn't easy. The hunt is on, and I'm you're the prey. prey. Exodus 2013. Kane and Muslim Yo are riding around and they get pulled over. The cops beat the shit out of them and drop them off in the Mexican hood. It's sad hood movie, Mexican. The essays was cool though. They took us to the hospital. Jada Pinkett visits Kane in the hospital. She tells him about some new job she got. It's in Atlanta and she wants him to go with her. Came with you. Yeah, I mean. Go to you ain't doing bro. jack shit here. And the way that I see it, you'll be dead or you'll be in jail. It was all so crazy. And things were starting to look different to me. They having this super nigga going away party for Jada Pinkin and Muslim Yo and everybody that's leaving. They got 40s and shit and they playing dominoes and shit, yelling at each other. It's very nigga. On the side note, bro, I was in Texas and they allowed to sell 40s. I had a 40 or OE. No knocking people that grew up on 40s and stuff. Every time you get to like the bottom, like this area right here, and it get warm, because it be so much to drink, you feel me? So you be, it be cool, it be cool, it be cool. When you get down to like a quarter left in the bottle, I can't drink it. I don't know how people still be like chugging it and it be that little bit. It be nasty, bro. Like a warm 40 be disgusting, bro. I'm sorry, man. You got to like... You got to drink it super fast. and But in these movies, they just be holding it all day and just letting it get warm. And I'm like, bro, I can't I can't do it, bro. Hey, and what you doing out here? Like, the quality ain't good. It'd be like a dollar and 80 cent or some shit. It'd be like a whole, like, Zometica stock or some shit just for one. But then, like, you got to buy another one, bro. And then I don't know how many 40s really get you lit. Like, I'd rather just buy, like, come on, bro, like, this little cup of rum, yeah, it'd be, like, $30, but it's, like, that's gonna get me right off of, like, a cup. Me drinking that whole thing, I'm gonna have to piss twice, and then it's gonna be nasty if I don't drink it fast enough. It's too much stuff that come with it, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know why they drink 40 so much over there. Then you, all the calories, bro, like, if you don't, I guess running away from cops, you burn the calories off, but... I ain't trying to run away from cops every single day, bro. So, I don't like that. Yo, let me have a drink. <coughs> you know, hey, no, man. No. I'll make it a little nigga something to drink. Let's make it. Get in the house. And, uh, Kane, can I speak to you for a second? Yo, so, yeah, so this blurry. scene plays out a lot like the flashback with Soul Food Kid. Except this time, he doesn't get the drink. It, like, symbolizes Kane's growth as a character, maybe. 
Nigga don't like the hood no more or something? Maybe everybody lecturing him finally got through. Honestly, I, I don't see the appeal with Kane. Everybody in the movie makes it seem like he's a fucking prodigy or some shit. He don't really do shit. He's just a regular nigga kind. I felt the same exact way, bruh. Like, his cousin was cooler than him. And his cousin was only in the movie for like 20 seconds. It's like, what's the difference between Kane and Sharif at this point? Sharif just be spitting the stuff that he that people tell him. He just be trying to ignore the stuff people tell him. But they both not really cool. Like MC8, you could tell he bought that street life. Like, yo, like, hey, man, like, what's up, man? Like, let's get over here. He just crazy. Old dog just crazy. He'll do whatever it takes. But it's like, he don't really do much. And it's like, Jada really likes him. I mean, he give up money every now and then. But it's like no real reason to really like him like that. He ran down on the female because he bought the little stupid car. But it's like, I don't know. It's like, people just drawing to him. But he don't do nothing throughout the movie. He don't be making super tons of cash. He don't be looking out for the homies. He just be a regular ass nigga in every function every facet he just regular kind of like he don't really do shit in the whole movie to make you feel like he's special he kind of a boring character to be honest no, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're just wrong. are you gonna come with us no i agree like he if he was like like harold like how he was just like getting money and he just was like like looking out and he was just a cool ass dude he don't really come off like that on this Night. movie yeah i'm gonna go Kane agrees to go to Atlanta with Jada Pinkett. They have this 90s ass sex scene. It's supposed to be sexy. It's not sexy. Everything's looking. Yeah, the sex scene with uh, Dashiki. Dashiki and Ashtray was better than theirs. At least it was funny. <laughs> pretty good for Kane. He got a girl that he like, that he stole from his homeboy. He got some nice ass rims and shit that he also stole. He a happy person. All his crimes paying off. They still at the party and Chauncey start being weird and grabbing on Jada Pinkett. Kane hated when people grab on Jada Pinkett so he immediately beats the fuck out this nigga with the back of a gun. Bro, that's too much. That's your friend. Things start to get even worse when that one random light-skinned bitch calls Kane and tells him that she's pregnant. Kane, I'm pregnant. Well, what the fuck you telling me for? Man, I'm telling you, it's a good-ass fight, man. This look like Kane beating your ass the other night, man. I bet you Kane won't be laughing after 5 will get a hold of this motherfucking tape. That's corny, bro. That's corny. So he a snitch. He a snitch. Let's call it. Uh, he's six nine before six nine, bro. So somebody, so so somebody whoop your ass and shit. You was in the wrong. At the end of the day, it should have been like, damn, my bad, homie. Like I know that's your girl and stuff like that. I shouldn't have been pressing up on her. But let's let's shoot the friendly fade. You feel me? Let's squabble up, man on man. You had caught me off guard that day. Let's settle this. You feel me? Now nah, I hope that five old. How you gonna frame your homeboy like that? Like, come on, bro. Just because people tra cracking on you and jawing on you, like, nah, bro. Motherfucking Bro, what the fuck kind of hoe ass shit is that? Y'all niggas that's commit that's hella crimes together sometimes. This part always felt off to me a little bit. Yeah, because I'm like, you had them steal the car for you. So I'm pretty sure they done stole cars and stuff for you before. And you done seen the relationship that he had with. Like, you just, you just trash, bro. Like, you just pathetic, bro. And you just sit around all day and wait for people to, like, I don't know. Like, from the way the Chauncey character is set up, Chauncey you figure trash. he would try to fight Kane or smoke him or something before doing some shit like this. There's really no indication that he was a bitch-ass nigga the whole time. He yeah. kind of chill the whole movie up into this scene. Into Maybe that. that's the point, though. It's like, you never know who to trust. The homies, the hood don't love you. I don't know. That nigga, fuck Kane, nigga. They go to see Purnell in jail to tell him they moving. Jada Pinkett is mad at this nigga, so I guess she really don't like the savage shit. I mean, she definitely does a little bit, though. I get it. It's sexy to be gangster. Let me talk to Kane. How come you ain't never come to see me? 
Nigga, I don't that, know you. you. Fucked up, you know, that's, that's <laughs> coming from, see? Went to the pen oh, to yeah. see Pernell, man. Oh, for real. <laughs> that nigga get mad at you or what? Hey, which one of y'all is Kane? But I'm Alina's cousin, partner. She don't like the way you've been dogging her, and I don't either. Yeah, and I think you better watch who the fuck you. Oh, oh, shit. Okay, first off, I'm sick of seeing this nigga. Second, what the fuck was he thinking? He went by himself, unarmed, to an unfamiliar hood, to threaten some nigga he knows nothing about? What the fuck else did you think was gonna happen to you? Then again, this nigga goes super hard and- Man, hold on, how, how did he even know where to find Kane at? How you just go up to the first people he see, hey man, which one of y'all is Kane? You would never do that in the hood, bro. Because everybody would be like, who the fuck is you, nigga? Like, everybody would pull out their strap on you or just feel like, let's jump this nigga or something like that. Why would you even come? And he had homeboys. Because when they, they smoked him, he had hella homeboys that was with him. So why would you even try to do something like that? That was the stupidest way to approach a situation I've ever seen, bro. He don't like the way you've been dogging her and stuff like that. Bruh, that happens all the time in the hood, bro. I'm sorry to say, but niggas be knocking up females and skating every single day, bro. You going over there and getting yourself caught into some drama, that's stupid. That ain't thinking with your new Every bro. movie, so I'm not surprised. This nigga need to be off the streets, too. In real life, Kane grandparents end up kicking him out. I guess they finally stop having hope for this nigga. On top of that, the cops are looking for this nigga because Clifton Powell snitched on him and old dog. They hiding with random homies and hoping the law don't come for him. That's a great plan. It's a couple weeks later and Jada Pinkett and Kane are ready to move to Atlanta. Old dog is sad because his friend leaving. He's showing normal human emotion for once. This nigga wanted for murder. This nigga a cold blooded killer. Of course they leaving you nigga. You crazy as fuck. You a fucking menace to society bro. <laughs> this nigga a fucking menace three society. Meanwhile, Samuel Monroe Jr. is planning his revenge on Kane. He got his homies and shit. He does this fucking goofy ass run to the car. Like, what? Is, are you sneaking, sir? It's broad daylight out there. Bro, he's he's always funny, dog. He'll be in a serious moment, like how he did in the set it off reaction. Acorn Projects, bro. I thought you knew. Like, and then he did the little funny run. Like, I don't know if they told him to do that or if he just was like, bro, let me add some little comedy to these scenes, bro. I don't know, bro, but he always funny, man. I wish he was in more movies, dog. What's the fucking sneaky run for? Just walk. You look hella suspicious. Kang. Kang. Thought you was going to help out my brother. That starter cap clean, though. Look, he's looking morning, like flies. <laughs> Yo, what's up now, partner? I know it's going. instinct trying to save the kid. It's fine. But these niggas were aiming directly for you. The guns were following you. He don't know that though, probably. It's okay. Everybody's safe. Except for Muslim, yo. He actually dead. And also Kane dead too. This nigga's dead the whole time or something. It was his ghost narrating the movie. It's a twist. It's pretty scary. Hooping yo is here and he's holding Kane trying to keep him alive. This nigga's barely in the fucking movie though. Don't try to squeeze into a fucking emotional scene now, nigga. After stomping my little cousin like that, I knew I was gonna have to deal with that fool someday. My grandpa asked me one time if I care whether I live or die. Yeah, I do. Now it's too late. This is a fucking bleak ass movie. I mean, it's a great movie, but it's not super easy to watch. It's super violent, but it's super realistic. I don't know how niggas will be just watching this shit for fun. I know plenty of niggas too that would watch. It's like at least in Boys in the Hood, like Trey, it showed the like positivity of having like a, a strong male like father, and he could he could keep you away from doing like evil shit. This movie, man, he lost his parents and had some good role models and his grandparents and he still wound up dying when he was trying to get out the hood so it, it, it didn't show no like growth and then even Sharif a motherfucker who changed his life this movie was more gritty bro at least boys in the hood showed you a silver lining to the whole shit this shit ain't had no silver lining either they was gonna go to jail but then he wound up getting killed anyways so now she got on she gonna move to Atlanta she ain't got him she don't got her baby daddy 
Now she finna have a tough ass life, like with the trauma that she gonna go through. She gonna need therapy. Her son watching Kane get killed in front of him gonna need therapy. It's like an ongoing cycle in this damn movie. Old dog, I'm pretty sure gonna die or go to jail or prison for that damn murder. It's just a wrap. The whole fucking thing is a wrap. The only person that came through, I guess, clean is the motherfucker um going to Kansas to to, to go on the hoop scholarship with his big ass. He ain't had no fucking play in the whole movie. But maybe he gonna hook up with Sloney. I don't know. That's this shit and look up to old dog thinking he was cool and shit. That's horrifying if you think about it. But he is pretty cool. This shit definitely a classic. Definitely stands on its own. A lot of people will lump this movie together with Boys in the Hood, which is fine. They are kind of similar, but not really. Boys in the Hood was focused on average kids growing up in the hood. Menace to Society is more about the radical niggas, and you do really need to tell both stories. It was well acted for the most part. Lorenz Tate is fucking horrifying. Everybody does their job pretty good. It's pretty good. That's it, y'all. Make sure to subscribe, please. Like, why the fuck don't niggas be subscribed? I don't These know, don't be happy. I feel the same. <laughs> why y'all can't just subscribe? Sometimes, just subscribe to your boy channel, man. I react to a reaction of a reaction of a reaction. I done heard it all before, bro. Same thing that a lot of 2 million subscribers ain't saying no names. They be reacting to reactions of reactions. They be starting drama, fake beef, fake drama, fake everything. And people be subscribing to them. So y'all subscribe to the real niggas that's on the bottom, you feel me, that's trying to come up in this world. And you know what I'm saying? And you could do the same exact thing, you feel me? I love y'all loyal supporters of my channel. I appreciate everybody that watches my videos. I'm not even going to lie to y'all. I'm indebted to y'all. Y'all my family. I call y'all child support gang. For a reason because we a gang we 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 stick together you feel me life may be hard life may be not going your way right now but we finna all you know continue to survive continue looking up and we gonna do what we gotta do because every single day is a new day bro if you on this earth just thank you thank whoever you believe up above or if you believe in yourself thank yourself man waking up in the day meditate Stay positive, and things is going to happen for you, you feel me? Just continue grinding, keep striving for better, and don't do the shit that they did in this movie, because they just fucking killing people and fucking living this crime life, and that shit ain't going to get you nowhere, you feel me? So, do it the legit way, man, do it the honest way, and keep striving, keep surviving out here in these streets, you feel me? Because I'm black. Every time I step out the, the door, you never know if it's your last time coming back. So tell everybody that you love them. Tell everybody that you appreciate them. Don't leave no argument with somebody that you care about. Unsettled, bro. Settle that shit. You got to squabble up, throw hands or something like that. Like, make that situation right. You feel me? Whatever you got to do, man. Apologize if you need to apologize. And come out here strong, man. Strong mentality, strong mind. Get this money. Do what you got to do. This is another reaction of a hood cinema, Menace to Society. Shout out to all my subscribers. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all for rocking with me. Shout out to Prem's Hood Cinema. Always coming through with the heat like he always do. Make me laugh every now and then, you feel me? Bringing up our spirits, you know, because this time right here, we got to start hustling. We got to get into these stocks. We got to start investing in ourselves. We got to start doing what we got to do. Get this paper out here. It's a lot of paper out here, man. We just got to put our names on it, you feel me? Stay positive. Glass half full. And I'm out, bruh.